Hi all, this week the angels talk about faith, not so much as a belief in things unseen, but rather as a deliberate choice to focus on things we wish to see. I'll share thoughts and ideas on how we can practice this type of faith not because someone has told us to do so, but because we want to prove to ourselves how the energetic universe really works. Have a blessed and beautiful week, smiley face, and message from the angels my dear friends, we love you so very much. Imagine you had a magical television. Whatever you were thinking would appear on the screen. The more emotion you feel about your thoughts, the greater the clarity and detail become. As your thoughts change, the picture changes. As your emotions change, the picture becomes clearer or fuzzier. The more you hold your focus, the more the story you are watching will evolve. Each time you shift, the picture on your screen shifts with you. Dear ones, this is your life, except for one tiny detail. Unlike that magic TV, you get a time delay between what you think and what you start to see in your waking life. You get to build momentum before the scene starts to appear, and happily, you have time to course correct before unwanted things begin to appear in your reality. This is why faith, which many of you define as a belief in things unseen, is one of your most powerful tools. We would rather call faith the ability to focus on things unseen or, even better, the ability to focus on what you want to see. When you, F focus your feelings with A attention and action I and T total H harmony you will eventually cultivate the faith you call A belief in things unseen. Faith, as we know it, is not a passive belief in the benevolence of a God outside of yourself who will grant you favors. Faith is focusing your feelings with attention and action so as to exist in total harmony with the love that lives within you the love that is you. None of you will do this all the time, but the more you can, the better you will feel, and the more you will enjoy your guidance, magic, and miracles. Magic is not magical, dear ones, it is just a word you use when you begin to experience the synchronicity of the non-physical realms. Miracles are not really miracles. They are scientifically predictable results of vibrational alignment. Someday, science will understand this, but for now, understand that faith your ability to focus your feelings with attention and action in total harmony with the love that you are is your key to magic and miracles. When you align with love, you align with the core essence of all things and all beings. You tune into a reality the show on your life TV where loving beings cooperate in ways beyond their individual comprehension. You are tuning into the reality where you are guided and in which you will experience beautiful synchronicities. When you focus your feelings with attention and action in total harmony with love, then dear ones, you are not subject to the lower vibrational attempts to manipulate and control you. Aligned with love, you have compassion for all but a strong sense of self, trust in your guidance, and surrender to life's daily offerings. You will have taught yourself, through experience, that what is in front of you will ultimately work out for you. So how do you cultivate faith, dear one? We hear you ask this so often. The answer is a simple one but one that must be put into action. You practice. You focus your feelings with attention and action in total harmony with love as often as possible. You don't try to fake love. You try to find things you can love. Don't pretend to love people you don't or can't easily love. Focus on those you can. Don't pretend to like the food you don't like. Find food you do. Don't focus your feelings with attention and action on what you despise to fight against it. Focus your feelings with attention and action on that which you love to empower. If you fight hunger you will just see more and more of it on your life TV, thus empowering that show. Better to focus on those who like to feed and serve, thus empowering a more powerful reality. One will drag you down and disempower you. The other will raise you up, inspire you, and inspire others. If you say you love and forgive your ex or former boss but feel your jaws tightening and your breath becoming shallow, then dear ones, your thoughts are noble, but your emotions aren't there yet. Focus on something more pleasant. Use your precious tools of attention and action to be in total harmony with love by finding things and beings you can more easily feel good about. If you love your dessert more than your former boss, bask in the glory of your wondrous dessert, wish this individual peace, 
then put them out of your mind by focusing on something or someone more pleasant. You would not want to watch every show on your television. You have your preferences. Likewise, you would not want to watch every show on your live TV. Replace the things you no longer wish to observe with better thoughts. It isn't that difficult. If we asked you to name the most frustrating person in your life and then list at least 50 better things to think about, you'd be able to write this list in no time. There are no medals in heaven for choosing the hardest path to love, dear friends. As water tries to find the easiest course, love does, too. Be kind to yourselves. Don't try to love the ones you can't love right now. Love what you can, and eventually, you will be so filled with love that even your worst enemy, who we would call your greatest teacher, will be just another person on your path of expansion. The more you practice focusing your feelings with attention and action in total harmony with love, the more you will cultivate what you traditionally call faith a belief in things unseen. As you start to see your truly positive thoughts and authentically good feelings attract more and more in your life, you will see the vibrational universe in action. You will come to know, through experience, that the unseen will not remain unseen for long. You will show yourself that the more you can focus on and feel what feels good, the quicker the good will appear on the screen of your life TV. We want the best show on earth for every one of you. God bless you. We love you so very much. The Angel's Message from Anne Hi everyone, I remember the day I started to question my faith. I grew up Catholic and honestly had a very good experience with it. I love God. I felt the presence in church. I loved the band masses we went to as a kid, where what I now call the hippie church band played 60s style devotional music. What color is God's skin? What color is God's skin? It is black. It is yellow. It is red. It is white. Everyone's the same in the good Lord's sight complete with bongo drums and banjos. I loved that. Even the pipe organ masses were something else. I could feel the music flowing through my body. And it was fun, too, to see all the ladies in their fine dresses wearing lace veils that I covertly tried to touch when they weren't looking. There was just something about so many people getting together to pray that felt good to me. That said, some of the beliefs didn't feel so good. While we sang about equality at band mass, some people in the church believed our way was the right way and the only way. That never made sense to my second grade brain. If God made us all, why would they love some of us more? I didn't accept that. The catechism taught us the omnis, that God was omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, etc. all-knowing, all-present, all-powerful. If God was all-present, well, he or she or it was in me and everyone else, and why would God not love itself? I had a lot of questions, but I was still raised in the religious tradition and wasn't willing to question it to the point of changing my life, until I was in my young twenties. A friend brought over a book he had been reading. I don't even recall the title. It wasn't one of the more famous ones. It was about the author's experiences out of body at night, meeting up with various beings, some of them ETS. I read it and felt both unsettled and curious. What if everything we believe about heaven and hell was based on someone's out-of-body adventure in the other realms? What if purgatory was just where the confused sat around until they got into the light? What if there was really no judgment? Then how would we all know what was right and what was not? I didn't have the understanding I do now. I had only what I was taught, what I had accepted and I was starting to wonder about the reality of it all. 